Hello everybody, I am Brittany Edwards and welcome to my box of chocolates. Couldn't help but notice that you're interested in a little tea on Fulbright. Well, lucky for you, I made enough for two. Ooh, bars! Okay, but first, you know, this tea is really hot so I have to give you guys a disclaimer or something like that. That was the wrong disclaimer, wasn't it? Okay, wonderful. Well, now that I can't get sued, let's continue to spill the tea on Fulbright, shall we? So, I wrote down a list. It's line. I want to make sure that I give you all the juiciest of the juice that I have. Let's start with number one. You can't choose your placement site. So basically, you could end up signing a year of your life away, living in purgatory somewhere, in the middle of nowhere. That's actually what ended up happening to me, but because I'm a grandma and I don't really do much with my life, you know, I go to bed at 8 p.m., I don't really socialize, whatever, whatever. So for me, it wasn't really a problem, but for the other seven girls that I was with, they were not having it, like, at all. They absolutely hated it. And it's really kind of taboo and we don't talk about it a lot because we kind of, like, feel bad or, I don't know, basically what I'm saying is, is Fulbright isn't all rainbows and sunshine and sometimes it's a lot of rain and people just don't really want to talk about it because you, we don't want to put a bad face on it but that was our reality. Here's the situation. Once you're there, you could be in the major city or you could be in the middle of nowhere and you have no choice over where that is or what happens to you. I mean like, yeah, you fill out this little questionnaire about, you know, where you want to go but it's really just for giggles. You could really hate where you end up. At the end of the day, they're going to put you where they want to put you. And so, you either do it or you don't. That's the tea on that. If you tend to have good luck with games of chance, maybe this is for you. Maybe, you know, things will work out in your favor. But I had to host some kind of kumbaya retreat because I figured a year of depression, like, just wasn't that cute. And we just have to find some way to really enjoy what we have. And things got a lot better. Actually, to be honest with you, one of the girls, she didn't even make it all the way to the end. So we started out as eight and we ended with seven. And part of it, it wasn't all because she didn't like where we were. And a lot of it was also related to like some health issues and stuff like that. So, okay, I'll give y'all a little 1.5 because we're still on number one. But if something happens and you can't complete your Fulbright grant, you're responsible for paying back everything that you taken from them. That's probably gonna vary like you know based on your host site but the fact that that exists and I don't think that's something people talk about. Be cognizant of the fact that you're signing a contract and if you can't complete your contract for some reason like you're responsible for paying that back. <clears throat> Number two, researchers I hope you like DIYs because Fulbright basically leaves you out to dry. So what I mean by that is that you are responsible for finding your own accommodations and living situations and connections and all of that within your host site. Which is nice because I mean you have full creative freedom to live anywhere with anyone, do anything, but also like it's really difficult if you don't speak the language, you don't have any other connects to people there, you have to work with a local landlord to figure out your lease and your blah blah blah, like, it, it could be really stressful to do that in a whole place and language that you're unfamiliar with. That's not the best. For ETAs, they're a lot more supportive, you know, they find our place, do the landlord, get our roommates, blah blah blah, which also like, kind of sucks because you can't choose but also there's no in the middle you know what I mean like it would be nice if we could just okay number three just like this wild card Fulbright is chaotic and reckless what do I mean by that I mean that every host site every country or place or region that you apply to all has a different way of running their Fulbright program so you quite literally don't know what you're gonna get. There's no cohesive Fulbright body, so yeah, it's just basically a free-for-all. There's no Fulbright organization, maybe it's just run through the embassy and they just kind of like, oh, here, you know, here's a little school, go play. But in terms of being a really organized, well-oiled, you don't really know what you're gonna get. You know, like every Chipotle you go to, you know you're gonna get the same flavor. 
knowledge will break. It's going to be different. And you're just going to have to hope that the concept of a burrito. Yeah, I'm definitely a burrito girl, not bowl. The concept of a burrito has to be delicious enough to you that it doesn't really matter what flavors of the things that go in it are. You're just going to love whatever. So there's no consistency. I mean, you consistently say the ETA is going to be teaching English, but that's your burrito. So let's just continue. Number four, they don't really give you enough money. I mean, okay, so for me, I'm an introvert, grandma, go to bed at 8 p.m., low-key a minimalist. I don't really need much. So for me, it was enough. But I know people that were literally living paycheck to paycheck. And by that, I mean barely making it, like needing to borrow money from people. And honestly, it all just depends on your lifestyle. So if you're going out a lot, and also if you're eating a lot of like Western style food, you're gonna rack up a tab super quickly, like crazy quickly. And it's just a flat rate, regardless of where you live. I live in the middle of nowhere, so clearly my cost of living isn't as high as the people that are living in the major city or major cities. Your rent, your car, your whatever, whatever. So <laughs> you better just hope that your lifestyle isn't very expensive because if it is, then you're really not gonna feel like you have enough money to live and survive and that's really stressful and something we don't need. And now a word from our sponsors. Amazon Sorry, quick tea break. <clears throat> Things were getting too hot. Okay, number five. You get what you get and don't get upset. I mean, you can get upset, but it's not gonna change anything. And that's the motto that I just had to take up because I was working about like 22 classes a week and I had to go to school at 7.30 and I ended at four. My roommates had about 12 classes a week and they would go in at 10 and get home before me. You know how frustrating that is? We're all getting the same amount of money. Like to know that I left at the crack of dawn, rode on my little bike to school before they've even opened their eyes, and to come home to them before me? Yeah, no, that was a little bit. You know, so I just had to accept that the universe just had that for me at that time and place to just work a lot more than the people around me and that was just the situation. If things that are like unequal or unfair and unjust kind of really get under your skin, then full writing for you because there's some people that are gonna have a lot more responsibility in the classroom than you. Like, so some people might be basically the main teacher and they're responsible for creating the lesson plans, etc., etc. And then you're gonna have some people that are basically just like a show and tell piece, you know? It's just like, hey! Here's this American that we have that can speak English and you guys can talk to them versus, you know, really kind of getting down and dirty and grabbing the teaching horn. What? Grabbing the the teacher reins by the horns. Grabbing the... What? Some American expression like that. And that goes for your number of classes, hours that you have to go to work, your commute, your mode of commute, the time your commute takes. This one girl, her commute was an hour. An hour? Just to go to where you're getting? You know how? Mm. Okay, anyway, so keep in mind that you're just gonna have to really accept whatever the universe has for you at that time because you really don't know what you're gonna get. Just like the Uno cards and just like my box of chocolate. Number seven. And this one is exceptionally hot. You can't travel. Yeah, I know. What's the point of going to living abroad if you can't travel whenever you want, wherever you want? Basically, Fulbright only allows you to be outside of your host country, placement, site, whatever, for a total of 14 days throughout the year. And, <laughs> fun little caveat, that 14 days can only be within your winter break. So, if you do decide to tempt fate and try to skip out the country and they find out, you gonna be in some big trouble. Big trouble. So I would just recommend that you, you know, stick to the rules. I personally know people that did leave 
nothing happened nobody found out about anything so i'm not recommending that you do that but it's a thing that you should be very cognizant of and it's also something that's like kind of frustrating especially if you're in like a really small place but just the concept of being right there where everything is so accessible and you've got the theoretical money that you haven't been spending because you're integrated in grandma just like me and you could travel anywhere but except you can't travel anywhere so just keep that in mind of like this isn't just some long-term paid vacation this is work and you're under contract and you got eyes on you for number six it's hard to live abroad. It's a really transformative time. I don't think that people really consider how many stressors, etc., come with completely upheaving the way that you're accustomed to living life. So in terms of your systems of support, your connectivity to people. So that's something that happened for me. I speak the language, but there's like a cultural connection that's missing. So the concept of, I could say something really random, uh, just the concept of like not needing to explain jokes and also being able to connect with people because of like a cultural similarity that just that part just is missing anyways moral of the story is, is that i'm not really somebody that gets homesick but that feeling of living abroad being hard definitely came on me which is weird and i just didn't really expect it so basically moving abroad is not an easy thing to live with, deal with, experience, etc. And there are probably going to be some huge stressors and maybe uncovered traumas and stuff that come up out of being in this experience and being in this circumstance. So just think about that. Keep that in mind. And if you're not ready to deal with that, then this tea's too hot for you. And Fulbright is not for you. And lastly, perhaps the most juiciest, is that although Fulbright is the top uh, what do they call it? The top international government exchange, something, something. Anyways, basically, Fulbright is like a really prestigious scholarship, fellowship, opportunity, whatever it is. But people really don't know what it is. Unless you're in academia and you're dealing with people in the realm of college, etc., people don't really know what a Fulbright is. But when you're applying to jobs and you're hoping to leverage this experience, if people don't really know what kind of prestige it holds, then it doesn't really help you. And speaking of doesn't really help you, Fulbright also doesn't really help you in terms of connecting back into your world, like re-expatriating. You just kind of, you gotta just DIY back. But basically what I'm saying is, is there's no system of support to re-acclimate you to being an American again. There's no, they can help you. There's just like no, networking things that are activated by Fulbright. It's all very DIY and it's kind of like well, loose. Basically it would just be really nice to be, become a part of an ecosystem, which you are, but it's not really very helpful because the ecosystem isn't very lively or known about. It's kind of like being a part of some secret society that you could connect with another person that is a Fulbright, but you don't get any perks. By that I just mean that there were a lot of us that finished and then we were like, uh, okay, well, what do we do now? So a lot of people actually used Fulbright as a gap year and then just applied to med school or grad school afterwards. That's kind of like the biggest thing that happens. I think Fulbright is probably really helpful if you're trying to go into foreign service or some type of direct government work like that. Basically, you just have to be doing Fulbright because you want to be doing Fulbright. You want to be living abroad and getting that experience versus trying to beef cakes up your resume because if you're trying to beef cakes it up then it doesn't really matter because nobody really knows what Fulbright is. They do make a big deal out of it at school but that's basically the only place that they make a big deal out of it. So uh, that's all I got on the tea for Fulbright.